Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shahab Karni. On behalf of Television I-95 Washington Digital Studios, I am here with you with a very powerful story with a very powerful character, Madam Secretary Kelly Schulz of State of Maryland Department of Commerce. How are you, Madam Secretary? Oh, I'm doing very well. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you and your audience today. I appreciate the invitation. Well, we are honored. The reason we are honored that in the Northeast Corridor, the state of Maryland is a big economic machine and engine. And you, as per my research, you are the only woman Secretary of Commerce in that region, you know, Northeast Corridor. So welcome. And I especially feel a pride that Maryland has a pride in you. So during this COVID situation, COVID-19, Secretary shows what were the challenges and how, what actions you had to take with Governor Hogan to turn around things as far as the state of economy is concerned. Go ahead, please. Sure. So I'll, I'll say from the very beginning in March, when we um, at the start of the pandemic and when the governor started um, putting in executive orders in the state of emergency, it became very obvious that it was also going to be an economic crisis. Um, so the governor, at the end of March, he uh, supplied the Department of Commerce with um, about $130 million of federal funding in order for us to be able to develop grant and loan programs for those small businesses that were in crisis. And so we were able to distribute those funds. And in July, uh, we got a second round of funding, about $50 million of funds in order to be able to distribute as well. So there was economic relief that we were supplying to the small business community, but on top of that, also providing um, additional types of resources and putting together um, at the department 13 industry advisory groups so that we could talk with those industries specifically to see where their pain points were. But also on top of that, to find out what they would see as far as their economic um, strategies for reopening and what we could do as a state to work with them on specific best practices and guidance for when the state was ready to start reopening. And we supplied all of those recommendations to the governor and to his economic recovery task force so that they could start the process of reopening. So um, it's been a very busy, almost seven months now, uh, working with the businesses and we will continue to work with them um, on everybody's strategies and what we can do to have full recovery with our economy. So in other words, your team was very well prepared, very vigilant and diligent so that you are very well positioned to cope up with the challenges and issues, right? Well, I, I would say yes, kind of. Um, I would say I don't think any of us in wherever we were, were fully prepared as to what was coming. Certainly, um, I don't think any of us knew how long uh, this crisis was going to go on for. Um, but I will say that the team here at the Department of Commerce dug in and found every single way to be successful during uh, what everybody calls as unprecedented times. But actually, it really was unprecedented times. The team here, typically their mission is to be able to help businesses expand and, and grow in the state and be able to, you know, kind of recruit other businesses to come into the state. Um, and they weren't doing a lot of that for obvious reasons during um, the height of the crisis. What they were doing was just helping businesses sustain themselves. So they really had to kind of shift their gears and do an extraordinary amount of work in many areas that they may not have been accustomed to before. And so I, I give all the credit to the team for in the fa face of adversity that they, uh, they really came out on top and were successful. Let's talk about the job situation in the state of Maryland. Uh, the projections during first 60 days and now where do we stand in terms of job market, job share, as compared to the national indicators, how do you feel? Well, I feel that Maryland has, um, that we, we are definitely on our road to recovery. The uh, unemployment numbers, um, both at the national level and at the state level came out um, at the end of last week. And so Maryland sits in a very nice position 
um, here in the mid-Atlantic region, uh, not having seen the initial um, levels of unemployment that some other states had. But more importantly, we're starting to see that steady um, increase in our economy. Um, for example, um, in Maryland, our unemployment rate uh, for the month of August was 6.9%. That's almost 20% lower than the national average of unemployment. And so we start, we're starting to see some very steady improvements. Obviously, as the governor slowly began to reopen uh, businesses in different industry groups, uh, we started seeing our, our numbers get better. The hardest hit industries, of course, were all related to the tourism industry, the restaurants, the retailers, the destination locations, the, the entertainment venues. And we're starting to see employment um, go back into those industries as well, obviously on a very slow level. But what has always been important for the governor, and I think is as important or more important to the business community is that we stay open. And we have seen some states have to reverse their opening strategy. And we don't wanna do that uh, because the hardest thing for any business is going to be have to, having to re, um, shut the doors again on, on what their economic recovery is. So we're very much supportive of a very slow um, opening strategy to be able to make sure that our health numbers continue to stay low and we can continue to keep Maryland open for business. Now, under your leadership, because you have been there for almost, if I'm not mistaken, for almost two years now, or a little less than two years, some of the new initiatives or some thought process for adding value to the state of economic in state of Maryland. Are there some initiatives that you have launched or you are thinking of launching? Yeah, so um, the best laid plans, right? Uh, 2020 was um, expected to be a really great big year for, um, I will say the year of the woman, which the governor had announced uh, 2020 is the year of the woman. And at the Department of Commerce, building on top of that and looking at our entrepreneurs in the state, uh, focusing on um, what we want to do as far as that ecosystem of all of those innovative type of um, businesses and entrepreneurs that are um, around the state and in every corner um, in the federal labs and the university spaces and doing sometimes their, um, their research and innovative uh, work in their garages or basements. Um, however, we got delayed. So that was going to be a big initiative. Uh, fortunately, uh, we're starting to come out of the, the crisis a little bit and we're starting to get back to some of our main mission. And so about a month ago, we launched what is called um, our Innovation Uncovered. And that's an effort for us to be able to highlight the wonderful entrepreneurs and the, their innovative minds, and also to highlight the businesses. So we have a competition um, that we're getting nominations for uh, any business that thinks that they can be Maryland's future 20. So who are those top 20 businesses out there that are doing um, extremely innovative um, work within um, any type of um, innovative field? and we're not being restrictive of what those are. So we have many um, nominations that have come in thus far. And in November, we're going to be announcing Maryland's Future 20 and highlighting to the entire world the type of assets and resources we have in the state to attract more businesses just like this. Because I remember uh, that in the beginning of 2020, I think with your advice or counsel, governor declared 2020 as the year of women the state of Maryland. So any initiative, I understand the challenges due to this unfortunate situation, but any plans to come up or catch up with that uh, script or with that plan, especially yeah. for women entrepreneurs? Sure. Um, obviously, um, a little bit of those um, plans got sidetracked as well with the Year of the Woman. Um, because of COVID and having to do a lot of those events virtually. Um, I will say the the Maryland Women's Commission did a wonderful job in, in pulling together women from all over the state to continue with a with a full day summit and, and talk about the importance of why this year of the woman, you know, with the 100th anniversary of um, the women's right to vote. And so we're very, very excited to have continued with that. 
Um, and we are very, very proud of the fact that Maryland has the most women owned businesses than any other state um, in the nation. So kind of rolling that year of the woman in with our entrepreneur innovation uncovered effort um, to highlight them there as well um, is something that's going to be very important for us. You will be working towards that as well. Now, coming back to a very vital question, you know, because uh, state of Maryland, Baltimore, city of Baltimore as a port, I call it port city of Northeast Corridor, one of the port cities. International trade. So, Madam Secretary, tell us what initiatives, if there are some in the pipeline to enhance the international trade and more traffic towards the port city of Baltimore. What is in the pipeline? Yeah, so obviously, um, like everything else, um, international uh, travel and international trade has had to take a little bit of a back seat as far as the travel is concerned. But our international team continues to work with our 16 foreign offices across um, across the world in order to be able to assist with um, importing and exporting for our Maryland businesses. So um, they continue to be very active. We continue to have many conversations. Uh, we continue to work with our STEP grant program, and that's a, a program through the federal government, which allows us to work individually with businesses so that they can have access to those foreign offices um, who may have uh, business opportunities. Um, so we have not um, slowed down at, at all as far as our uh, virtual conversations that we're having um, across um, all of the waters um, of the globe. And it's really important for the businesses to know that a big part of their expansion and what they can do um, is going to be a part of that exporting um, type of a process, uh, whether it be manufacturing, um, different types of um, high technology, whatever that may be, we're, we have the experts here to support that. Excellent. How, how do you see the, uh, the reception and the years from different local jurisdictions, different counties in the state of Maryland, when you talk about economic engine, your plans to implement, are they receptive to the ideas? They are. They are. We have here a wonderful relationship with um, all of the counties, all of the jurisdictions. We have regional business representatives that um, are assigned to those specific counties. Um, so they have direct interaction with each of the local um, economic development offices. So we really work um, in a partnership with with our local communities um, because it well number one it makes more sense to do that uh, when everybody is on board with with the same types of ideas and we get wonderful ideas that come from them also um, to be able to for us to be able to provide support for for what they're moving forward with with some of their site selection and the businesses that are looking as well so we currently have um, uh, with, with the governor's office, we have weekly phone calls right now with the county leadership and also with the municipality leadership. And I think it's really important for us to remain open to hear about what some of their um, troubles may be, what some of their needs are, uh, come up with, uh, I guess, shared solutions on, on how to move forward because each region of the state is a little bit different as far as what they need um, and what those types of industries are that, are that are looking. And we wanna be able to remain receptive to what some of those higher needs are in the local areas. Final comments, Secretary Schultz is uh, from the small businesses during your remaining, remainder of the period that you are in the office, what do you expect from them and how good partnership can be created between Department of Commerce and the small businesses so that there's a good productive partnership between them, those are the stakeholder. And I'm talking about not big mega corporations, but small businesses. Any plans for that? Yeah, so I think one of the uh, misconceptions is that the Department of Commerce only works with the largest of the large businesses. And you got, you got my point. Yes. Yeah, but but we but we don't. So I would say well over seventy percent of the businesses that our representatives work with on an everyday basis are small businesses. Um, they may be high tech and they may be in one of our key industries, but but they are the small businesses, and and we're there to be able to help them. Um, not even just sustain at this point in time like we are now, but also to grow and expand. And so what are those opportunities out there that we can help them to grow and expand? Because we want them to be the larger businesses if their business plans um, allow for that. 
I'll say one of the different um, areas that we will be, you know, continuing to look at is those types of industries that we're, we have been working with now that we had not worked with in the past, like um, restaurants and, and retailers that has not necessarily been a part of the department's portfolio. But as we have seen, um, those are the businesses that have needed some assistance the most. So what can we do and put together some plans in order to be able to assist them in, in their um, in their business uh, in economic growth? Finally, a request, Secretary Schultz, is from the small businesses that are you going to be open in thoughts and minds and heart to open up to, to support the small businesses during these hard times, just these are trying times, you know. So are you going to be able or you're willing to make some adjustment within your department to help them out? We already have. So yes, I, I will say absolutely. Um, we're, we're in a different time right now and we understand we, we have had to shift gears overnight at the department about seven months ago and uh, the team did it well. And we're gonna to continue to adjust to the needs of the state of Maryland, to our business community and to every industry so that we can see full recovery. Secretary Kelly Schultz, thank you. I'm deeply honored once again, so grateful for your time and good luck for your remainder of the office. Thank you. Thank you so much.